So, before we start this video off, just as a little disclaimer, I am a single trans man, so I cannot speak to every trans man experience, or even the whole trans community, but that being said, there are some grievances that I and my friends have been expressing that I want to discuss. If you are a trans man and want to air grievances that I do not address, please comment below. Also, a little content warning, we're going to be talking about genitals, so if you don't like uh, that, then this may not be the video for you. No hard feelings, just take care of yourself. So the last entry in this series was How to Talk to Sex Workers. I'll link that in the card above. And I didn't really want to make this into a series, but I feel like it is very poignant. Be Wait. It makes sense to. This guide is certainly going to be a little bit more sexually inclined because I always have sex on the brain. I'm sorry, but you guys seem to like that sort of stuff, so we're gonna keep talking about it. But just because I'm talking more about sex in this video, don't think that it's okay to just ask random trans people, like, about how they have sex. That's, uh, truly the first no-no. Don't do that. Don't ask things that you really wouldn't ask a cis person in the same context. And if you are new to this format, I give some of the do's and don'ts of interacting with a particular group of people. Of course, in this case, it is trans men. However, this could be certainly applied to trans women, non-binary people, etc. This list is nowhere near exhaustive, but I hope it gets you all thinking. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, do treat us like cis men. Trans men are men, so you should treat us like men. Don't equate having sex with a trans man to having sex with a woman. If you are a gay man, it doesn't make you any less gay for wanting to have sex with a trans man. And don't think we all look the same, because we don't. If I see one more profile that lumps in all trans people, cross-dressers, and femme hairless twinks, I fucking swear I will. Number two, don't assume what we call our genitals. Everyone prefers something different. And this applies to cis people as well. Not every cis gay man likes it when you call his asshole a pussy, but certainly some do. So why would you assume that a trans man will want his genital to be called that? I'll wait. I have all day. Ask. Always ask what someone wants their bits to be called. I can't help but tell you how many times people have assumed what I like my bits to be called. For me, I prefer front hole or hole or anything kind of like that. But so many people have tried to assume what they are called and then that's an instant block button for me, hon. Obviously you don't know that trans people may have dysphoria around those parts and you don't know what a trans person is, so I'm just probably gonna cut my losses. Block button. Number three, do include us in your events. Many queer trans men go to events like gay campgrounds, bathhouses, uh, cruising nights at bars and have no problem. That's certainly me now, but that wasn't always the case. I have experienced a lot of trans-specific rejection, of which we'll talk about in another video, where someone may be into me, but then I tell them I'm trans or they see my scars or something that kind of tips them off of me being trans, turns them off all of a sudden. Unfortunately, many trans folk have experienced this. It's far too common and it makes a lot of trans people not want to go to these events. And I can't really blame them because I don't see, not in every event that is actually affirming of trans people or affirming of trans men or affirming of trans women or affirming of non-binary people, whatever target audience you're trying to go for is included in these events. Honestly, if you are an event promoter or you own a club or if you're just the person that's in charge of posters, it goes a long way if you just put a trans person on your poster. Or if you lead a group or if you're the owner of a campsite, maybe include a statement that welcomes trans people. A little goes a long way in these scenarios. And if cis people get mad, don't worry because a lot of trans people are gonna be now spending money at your place and their business is certainly gonna make up for the business you lost. As a trans person on the inside, I know that it's just a very long game of telephone to see what events are good for us and which aren't. And let me tell you, I will travel far for an event that does affirm trans people. Number four, 
Don't assume how we have sex. Some trans men are tops. Some are bottoms. Some are verse. Just like cis men. Not all trans men are bottoms. I'm gonna say that again. Not all trans men are bottoms. There have been so many guys out there that are like, because you have two holes, you're born to bottom. Or because you have extra holes, you're born to bottom. That's not everybody's cup of tea. There are certainly trans men out there that would be more than happy to bottom for you. That is not all trans men. <laughs> if I want a top and you have to say, and you say that I have to bottom because I'm trans, I'm gonna say fuck you and then I will block you. Furthermore, not all trans men like using all of their holes. I know that's not the case for me, but there are certainly a lot of trans men out there that is 1000% the case for. So trying to pressure a trans man, honestly pressuring anyone for like a sex act that they don't want to do is really shitty. But like, but even if, if like a trans man is a bottom and is wanting the bottom for you, don't expect that it's gonna be with his front hole. It's like if you took home a cis man and just because he has urethra, you assume that he's into sounding. A lot of, I, I don't know many cis men into sounding. I'm really into sounding. But for most cis men, that's a no-go zone. And I respect that. Why can't you respect it when trans men say that certain holes are no-go zones? And this wasn't in my script, but just kind of an add-on. Also, don't assume that just because this person is a trans man, they want you to interact with their front hole. There are so many trans, or blah, blah, blah. there are so many cis men who expect just because I want to have sex with them that they assume that I want to bottom with my front hole, but, and they're like, oh, I don't want to interact with that body part. And I'm kind of like, who the fuck told you you're going to get the privilege to interact with my front hole? So just to reiterate, don't assume how trans men have sex. There are many different ways for us to have sex, just like there are many different ways for a cis man to have sex. And even if we want, we like having sex in a certain way, doesn't mean that we always want to have sex in that certain way. It ver for me, I know it very much varies on a person-to-person -person basis. Not everyone meets the standards to ride this roller coaster emotional roller coaster. Kidding, I think. Number five, do consider what could or could not be gender affirming. This predominantly comes down to respecting boundaries and asking questions. Things that you should already be doing as a person. For example, you're preparing to do a scene with a trans man. You've both agreed to do rope, but he's pre-top surgery and you know he's dysphoric about it. What do you do? Well, you should ask him how he would want to be tied. So, some trans men, I'm sure, will just want you to avoid this area together. Some know certain ties that feel very gender affirming for them, and others just won't care. You always have to ask in these scenarios, though, to understand the person you're going to be playing with. And additionally, you want to probably change your language for the person you're tying with. Kind of what we were talking about before when we asked to know what the genitals are called, we want to probably know what other things this person likes or finds gender affirming. I know that pre-top surgery, I didn't necessarily like the word titties, but now I'm like, yeah, no, these are titties. These are bar titties. But this is not too unlike what you should be doing for your regular scene negotiation. And you should be doing this for trans and cis folks. But this is not just restricted to playtime. You should always be kind of asking what people prefer and what people don't prefer. For instance, if you're used to calling your cis gay friends girl, everyone may not like that. Not even other cis gays always like that. Always just check in to make sure that you're not crossing over a boundary with someone or anything like that. Boundaries are healthy and to be respected, even if you don't get it. I know this is a pretty short video, but I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember to comment below if you're a trans man, trans mask person, or really any trans person who wants cis people to act, interact with them in a better way. If you enjoyed the video, like the video. Subscribe. If you're already age of 18, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Puppomax. And if you're feeling generous, leave me a tip on Cash App or Venmo at Puppomax. And subscribe to my Just for Fans at justfor.fan slash Puppomax. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll catch you next week. Okay, bye.